Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, I've created the draft for game week one, which starts next Saturday. And as always, if you do like my videos, please hit the like and subscribe button below. So you guys know, my overall rank last season was 43,245, which got me inside the top 1% of all FPL managers in the world. So my two goalkeepers are Brighton's Matt Ryan and Aston Villiers' Orjan Nyland. The reason why I have Matt Ryan in my team is that he is only one of a few 4.5 million goalkeepers who will be playing from game week one. And I'm playing a strategy of set and forget where I aim to play only one keeper up until my first wildcard, whenever that will be. And with Matt Ryan and Orjan Nyland being 9.5 million combined, it does save me money to fill out my squad. In defence, I have Liverpool's Trent Alexander-Arnold, who will be at home to Leeds. Now, he has gone up in price to 7.5 million. However, if you combine his clean sheet potential, as well as being on corners and taking free kicks, he can get a lot of points despite him being 7.5 million. My second defender is Wolves' Ruben Vinagre. Now, the reason I have picked him is because the first choice left wing back Johnny is out injured and there is no timeline for when he will be back from injury which means that Vinagre could have a long time in the first team and at 4.5 million he is the cheapest way into a Wolves defence or who were pretty good last season defensively. My third defender is Tottenham's Matt Doherty. Now the reason I have him in my team is that because he is a really really attacking right back and for Wolves not only did he get clean sheets, but he had a lot, lot of attacking potential, scoring goals and creating assists. In my midfield, I have Southampton's Stuart Armstrong, who is away to Crystal Palace. Now, the reason I have him in my team is that Southampton as a team played fantastically well after lockdown. And Stuart Armstrong was one of those players who, with very low ownership, not only scored but created a lot of assists. And from the games that I did watch, Stuart Armstrong was in the box for a lot of the time and was actually getting a lot of chances. And at 5.5 million, he is very cheap and I can see him chipping in with really, really good points and performances. My second midfielder is Liverpool's Mo Salah, who will be at home to Leeds. Now, this is a game where Mo Salah could potentially explode. He is playing at home and they are playing against a team who are newly, rep newly promoted to the Premier League. And with Mo Salah being on penalties and his ownership being at nearly 31%, I think this is a player who you really need for at least for game week one. My third midfielder will be Arsenal's Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, who will be away to Fulham. Now, Aubameyang has been one of these players who has been reclassified from a forward to a midfielder. Now, what this means is that he could absolutely explode in terms of points. And because of that, I have made him uh, my captain uh, away to Fulham. And if we look at his ownership at the moment, his ownership is at 42%. So there are a lot of people who are getting him in their team right now. And as you can see, he has two very good fixtures away to Fulham and at home to West Ham United. My fourth midfielder is Tottenham's Hyung Min Son, who will be at home to Everton. Now, I really don't want Harry Kane. He is pretty, he's pretty expensive. And Son Hyun Min, he more or less starts nearly every single game. And if we look at his ownership at the moment, it is at nearly 28%. And he has really good fixtures between game weeks one and eight. My fifth midfielder will be West Ham's Thomas Suchek, who will be at home to Newcastle. Now, the reason I have him in my team was because after lockdown, he, not only did he start for West Ham, but he was scoring goals from corners and free kicks. And he reminds me a, li a little bit of Marouane Fellaini, who would get a lot of headed goals. Now, if we look at his fixtures, after game week one, they are not good. Actually, they are awful. However, he is a pretty cheap player at only 5 million. He can also be your fifth midfielder who can also just fill the bench knowing that he has a starting more or less every single game. Up front, I have Leicester's Jamie Vardy, who will be away to West Brom. Now, the reason I have him in my team is that I don't think a lot of FPL managers will actually get Jamie Vardy for game week one. 
However, I see this as an opportunity for him against a team, again, who are newly promoted to the Premier League. And if we look at his first two fixtures, they're pretty good. Away to West Brom and at home to Burnley. Not only that, but let's say after game week three, he does give me an option where I could potentially downgrade Vardy for, for example, Timo Werner or even Anthony Martial. Uh, so I see him as um, an interesting differential for, for at least game week one. My second striker will be Fulham's Alexandra Mitrovic, who costs six million. Now, the reason I have him in my team is if we look past the first fixture, if we go from fixtures or game weeks, if we go from game weeks two to nine, he only really has one challenging game, which is away to Sheffield United. Now, Alexandra Mitrovic will be a player that Fulham will rely on to get the goals. And I expect him to play every single game. So that is why I am holding him until at least game week nine. My first sub will be Crystal Palace's Tyrek Mitchell. Now he's pretty interesting because he's one of those players who who comes at four million. And just before the season ended, he actually started two games whilst Patrick van Anholt was injured. Now, right now, Van Anholt is still injured, and it, it looks very likely that Tyrek Mitchell will actually start the season at left back. Now, this is very interesting because if you really need a cheap defender, Tyrek Mitchell looks like the perfect player that you would want in your team. My second sub is Newcastle's Jamal Lascelles, who in game week one will be away to West Ham United. Now, the reason I have him in my team is that he is Newcastle's captain. Now, not only that, he also plays pretty much every single game for Newcastle. And if we look at the fixtures, apart from game weeks three and five, between game weeks one and 14, he has a lot of really good fixtures. So again, this is another player who I am looking to have in my squad, I probably have on the bench most of the time, but whenever Newcastle have home fixtures, he does give me an opportunity to actually play him in my team. My third sub is Aston Villa's Keenan Davis, who will have a blank for game week one. Now, the reason I have him in my team is that after lockdown, there were actually times when Keenan Davis was actually starting as a striker. Now, that gives me a pretty good optimism because Keenan Davis is only priced at 4.5 million. And... If you remember, Aston Villa didn't score many goals at all. And as of now, his only real competition up front is Samata. And that, bas that basically means that Keenan Davis has a lot of potential for actually starting a lot of these Aston Villa games. So guys, that's my potential team for game week one. So let me know in the comments below what you think. And... As always, if you do like my videos, uh, please leave a like, and if you can, subscribe. I'd really, really appreciate it. So, until next time, guys, peace out.